Hi everyone, just wanted to show you this um, awesome poster I got before we start this video. It's the Five Nights at Freddy's movie poster that I got. It was hanging up in our in the uh, entryway, and it was also hanging up in the hallway. And I made sure to go grab it because I'm a huge FNAF fan. So there we go. I got the entire poster. I was not able to get the uh, pizza box. Unfortunately, but I did get this, which is way better than a pizza box. So anyway, back to the video. So let's go. Oh, Hello, everybody. This is EJ Fizzle here. And today we are going to be reviewing the Five Nights at Phrase movie. Produced by Jason Blum and at Blum House Studios. With Emma Tammy as the director. And I can't remember what Scott Cawthon was, but he was definitely in this movie. Well, at least making it. So the movie starts out with our boy uh, Josh Hutcherson playing as Michael Schmidt. Piper Rubio is playing little sister Abby Schmidt. And then we got Vanessa Shelley playing, being played by Elizabeth Lale. And then we got Matthew Lillard playing as William Afton slash Steve Raglan. So the movie starts out with this one guy getting, you know, having the time of his life. You know, someone's bound at the door, goes through an air vent, and then doors locked, Foxy comes out and kills him. And puts him on the fast trap. So I'm gonna call this death machine, by the way. So the fast trap and dies. Then we get this cool little intro, which reminds everybody of the arcade mini games from Five Nights at Freddy's that we all know and love. And I especially loved it. It was really fun. I also love the intro music they added. I can't play it because it's copyright, but I could mimic it. It's just not gonna sound great. La 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 la. La la. See, told you, they ain't gonna sound great. So we got that, and then we wake up, or, well, I don't wake up, but Josh definitely does. So Michael wakes up, does his exercises, go to work at this ball, so me and him could be besties, and um, he goes and he finds this poor kid, and he's getting dragged by his parents, and, um, or by his dad, so. Of course he goes ape, ape and attacks the guy in the fountain and it turns out that kid was actually fine and that was his father. Yeah, that's not going to get you enough into it. That's not fucking enough. That's not going to cut it. Good luck on your next interview. He gets fired so he goes to career counselor aka Steve Raglan aka William Afton aka Yellow Rabbit and you know, it's all fun and dandy. You know, Steve Ragland's like, yeah, so uh, you kind of beat somebody in the fountain, so you can't really work anymore. I uh, hope you have fun with that. And then he reads the name, and it's like, oh, never mind. You know what? We're Freddy Fazbear's. Go there. And so Mike's like, wait, what? And then goes, like, at first he doesn't want to work there, but then he gets a real good idea with uh, Aunt Jane in the picture. Talking about how she's going to kidnap Abby. So there, or take Abby away, not kidnap, sorry. So Mike's obviously like, oh, okay, well, uh, Steve Ragland, yeah, uh, Freddy Fazbear, and he's like, Freddy Fazbear. So he goes first night, and then he just sleeps the entire time, and don't worry, this will be a recurring theme of him sleeping this entire movie. Oh my god, it's a fever dream, guys. So the reason why he's sleeping, you're probably wondering, is... Because he has these dreams of him get his uh, brother getting kidnapped. And he wants to go into those dreams to find out who kidnapped his brother. Which is both sweet and confusing. Because basically all five nights he sleeps. And the, when he sleeps in Freddy Fazbear's he finds five missing kids just staring at him. And throughout the nights he progressively sees them and they pers aggressively interact and the fifth night stuff gets real and then uh and then one day you know he's doing his thing gets hooked by foxy uh vanessa comes in and talks about the place like he, she owns the place he went wink wink <coughs> co-under <coughs> excuse me and so mike's like oh how do you know so much and she's like oh because you know as a kid i just love this place yeah, totally. So, um, you know, she does that. She gives him a badge and saying, yeah, here's the badge of honor. 
for your Freddy Fazbear times. Have fun. And then uh, Vandals come into the picture. So the Vandals were hired by Aunt Jane to take Mike off the job, pretty much. Like, just screw him over. And so that's exactly what they do. But before this, I do want to give a shout out to MatPat. MatPat got a cameo in the movie. Sparky the dog waiter. His name was Ness. Perfect. Cinema. I, well, not cinema, but I loved it. Okay, I'm a FNAF fan. Let's, let's move on. So the Vandals go in, break in, do their thing, and then uh, Bonnie and his, or Freddy and his gang don't like that. So one by one, they die in very creative ways. We got Cupcake biting this guy's face off. We got Hank getting, uh, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what Bonnie did, but it killed him. And then we got Foxy, did he dum dum dums the hell out of this guy. And then Freddy does the buy of 2023. <laughs> so there's that. So while that happens, you know, remember that one girl that got bite of eight or bite of 2023? Turns out that was Abby's babysitter. So Mike is kind of forced to bring Abby. Actually, he is a kind of, he is forced to bring Abby. So he brings Abby and they, you know, they're doing like a little sleepover thing. Mike's actually doing his job, props to him. And then he goes to sleep again at 4 a.m. Dude, you got like two hours you can live without sleep for two hours. I hope. And uh, Abby wakes up, finds the kids, or no, gets a call from a kid. And I'm just gonna call him Freddy because they don't spe specify what kid that it was that called him. I know some people are gonna say, oh, it was the golden kid's child. Well. You know what? That's probably right. But you know who comes out of that curtain? It ain't Golden Freddy. It's Freddy Fazbear. So, you know, she gets scared by Freddy. Or actually, never mind. She, they're just tickling. What am I kidding? What am I kidding about? Meanwhile, Mike is in sleepy dream mode and gets that same thing, you know. Oh, no. My, uh, uh, brother, no. And then sees one kid. And that's the g yellow blonde kid. Blonde kid on a blonde kid and the blonde kid is like what can we give you because Mike's asking like hey where's my brother who took my brother and then he's like what did we get and he's like anything which you definitely shouldn't do if you're ever in that situation don't just say anything to a random stranger even if they're a child and so he does that the kid's like okay and then shows him a picture of the yellow rabbit so obviously he's assuming it's fine. You know? <laughs> I'm just kidding, but could you imagine? Anywho, um, so he goes there, he wakes up, goes to save Abby, tries to use a chair on Freddy Fazbear, but luckily Abby was stopping this before Freddy broke that chair in front of him and then beat the living crap out of him. Because there was no way he could have won that fight with a chair. He ain't Nicolas Cage. So, uh, yeah, it does that, you know, be friends, the animatronics, next night, alright, but that's just there, cool, nice, uh, she's traumatized, that's, that's great, that's a real knee slapper, so she's traumatized, he goes over there and is like, hey, and then she's like, hey, and then Abby's like, fort, so they all build a fort together, which I don't know how these animatronics can fit in the fort, but I digress, I mean, come on, we, we had to do we had to have some good intentions. It's a horror kids movie. Calm down. So, you know, and then they find, you know, they do that. And then they go find more tabletops for some reason. And then they find Ella, which is a Springlock suit now. As opposed to a doll. So someone gave uh, Ella a mushroom. So that's nice. So Mike's about to touch the Springlocks, but then Vanessa's like, whoa, calm down, buddy. And it shows him that the spring locks are actually pretty damn dangerous and might kill him. So he's like, oh, how did you know? And so they get in an argument, and while that's happening, Abby touches Bonnie's guitar, which explodes on him, on her. So that's always a good old time. So she's fine now. And then Vanessa threatens to shoot Mike. On to the next night. All right, fifth night, final stretch, we got this. Uh, Mike goes back, falls asleep. They talk about saying, hey, you can have this dream every night, and it shows the family is all nice and fine, and you know, not dead, not all of them, because apparently all of them died, so that's great. Uh, sorry, Mike. 
and, and Abby. So anyway, they're all alive, have a fun little picnic, and he says, sure for, yeah, you can take it, I mean, sure, why not? But then he takes it away, takes it back a split second faster than he could say, FNAF. And, you know, the kids are like all upset now, and they're like, nope, sorry, you called it. It's already been done. And then they, like, attack him. So he's getting attacked. And then meanwhile, the blonde kid turns and evolves into Golden Freddy. And then Golden Freddy just kicks down the, I like, he kicks down the door, kills Aunt Jane, takes Abby, goes into a uh, cap car, or, yeah, a cat, a, a, oh my god, a cap car, a taxi, and Cory Kitchen drives him to Freddy Fazbear's. Golden Freddy basically drops off Abby and then dips for like the entire movie and then uh, for, or for the rest of the runtime. And she goes in there, Freddy and his gang are playing the greatest song that they could have put for this movie. Oh my god, I wish I could play it, but I don't want to get sued. I'm probably going to get sued for these pictures I'm using. Oh, maybe Jeff's too, but and we'll be fine. Anywho, all that's going on. Mike goes to the pizzeria, saves her, saves uh, the amb or saves Abby with a bucket of water and a taser, because those two things just go together so nicely. And then the uh, cupcake tries to jump him, but then he realizes he ain't got any arms or legs. So one, like you know those like rods but electric, yeah, that that gets in his system and he dies. So rest in peace, cupcake. You were. You're gonna be missed. So, you know, Mike Schmidt goes, does this thing, uh, tries to save Abby, but then uh, he sees William Afton, or sorry, my bad, Yellow Rabbit. And the Yellow Rabbit is like, symmetry, my friend, and then wakes up all the animatronics somehow. And then meanwhile, while this is all going down, Foxy comes out of the curtain, makes a Silver Eyes reference really fast, just to go get Abby and it's insane so he does that and then freaking vanessa shows up puts down foxy saves abby goes to try and save mike but then gets stabbed in the process freaking abby uses one crayon i i i swear to god it, it was one crayon makes a full-blown picture with different colors somehow with that one crayon and then smashes that thing, like rips the old paper because it showed them as friends, puts the, the truth, all the animatronics look, take a good look at that, look at Afton, and then they sick the dog, or Cupcake, sorry, he like acts like a dog throughout the entire movie, but yeah, he, he, they throw the Cupcake, kills William Afton, the end, movie ends, and also, hold on, we need a sequel drop, so they play the music, they play the uh, FNAF 2 music, and we know we're getting a sequel, okay? It's coming out December 5th. Anyway, so, that was the movie. How was it? It was a great movie, honestly. You know what? I loved it. It was my favorite. You know what? Probably one of the best movies of October 2023 only. Sorry, but December had Godzilla, and then we also had that one movie that I can't think of. I'm probably gonna think of a layer though. But anyway, uh, five, five Nights at Freddy's was probably one of the best movies they had for Blumhouse only. Like, okay, I know, there are some really good ones that are radar, like there's the Halloween series, and there's the Exorcist minus Exorcist Believer. That one kinda sucked. But this movie shows that video game adaptations can be good. Like, if you just stick with the fans, which is what Mario was doing, this is what Sega's doing, and this is what FNAF wanted to do. They wanted to lean more towards the fans, and they accomplished that. They made a fan base grow more than it has ever been, ranging at over $300 million. And that was on its opening week, and it was a stream on streaming. So I meant more people decided they wanted to go see the movie at the theater instead of going to see it on streaming. I personally, I saw the movie in theater, watched it on Peacock afterwards, 
And then I went back after work, my shift and went into another theater to see it again. Because that movie was really good. Like, the cameos were great, the Easter eggs were off the walls, and it was just a really fun time. So if you ever want, like, a nice gateway to horror, or you want to set your kids up with some when they can't stop talking about Freddy Fazbear, this is the perfect movie for that. So I'm bringing this a 10 out of 10. I mean, it's not the greatest movie, it's, it ain't no endgame, okay? But it is definitely a great movie for both adults and kids to like. Just the only cons I can give it is the story and the um, pacing, which I'm going to go over right now. All right, we're gonna start with the story. So the story, we got like three different plots in one plot. And it's a little confusing, and you do need some knowledge of the game, but I could just give you a rundown of what you need to know. So you see, we had five kids, you know? And then you see this big purple guy? His name's William Afton, you know? He killed a bunch of kids, those five kids specifically, and then boom, that, that's actually all you need to know. It's not too much. You guys got it. I know some people are saying, Oh, if you don't know the lore, you won't enjoy the movie. And although he, they are correct, there are some Easter eggs that people will see and know if they have seen the games, but others might not know, which is fine, but you could still get invested in this movie. Like, for example, I went to go see, uh, let's say, Mortal Kombat, and I didn't know a lot about Mortal Kombat, okay? But... Once I saw that movie, I knew exactly what was going on. And sure, I didn't get the references of like Luke Kane, nor did I get that one fatality reference, but damn, did I enjoy it. And it was still a fun time. And if I was able to enjoy that movie with no knowledge, you guys can enjoy it as well. Like, like, sure, it may be confusing at first, but at the end of the day, you're just watching five missing kids in five animatronic suits running around killing like a couple people but you gotta remember like I know a lot of people didn't like the fourth scene which I mean I get why you don't like it I mean it's a horror movie why why is there this random up felt thing with these giant creatures and there's probably dead kids in it like ew but I mean come on at least there's a point okay so the point is that these are just kids and at the end of the day, no matter what they did, you know, Vanessa said it best, which I can't actually play the clip, but I'm going to phrase it as best as I could. She was basically saying that these are just kids. They don't know what they're really doing. They're just doing what they're told. And they believed the madman, y y Yellow Rabbit Afton. And that's just how it was. They just... They were scared kids who didn't understand and the one person they saw, like when Freddy screamed, that meant that like they had that trust and they lost the trust from William Afton. I didn't want this to be a FNAF explained, my bad. But in all seriousness, no, the story could have been, okay, so the pacing was really slow, okay? I feel like the Five Nights at Freddy's areas of it, like, when he's actually in the pizzeria, Mike, those are the best scenes because, well, except maybe the first night. The, the, the first night was kind of, you know, he just fell asleep the entire time. But when it got progressively, you know, more scary, more a little alarming, you know, I know it's not that big of a movie that's too scary, but you know, it was still fine. But, you know, the pacing was a little slow. I didn't really like the moments with Aunt Jane. I feel like they could have cut it out because, like I said before, there were three plots. There was the Aunt Jane plot, the Mike needs to get a job plot to stop, you know, getting sued by the Aunt Jane. And then there was the brother plot. And I think personally that we could have had the Aunt Jane plot scrapped or very minimal, like a minimal point and had the brother be a greater use or the FNAF part. Like, here's what I think. 
All right, so this is what I think this movie should go. So Mike, you know, gets so we start the movie off as it was, you know, Nightguard gets killed. So now we know plot one. Why we got it? Someone died in this pizzeria. We need a new Nightguard. All right, cool. And then we go on to Michael Lafton doing his deeds, and then Michael Lafton or Michael Schmidt. I'm sorry, my bad. I got two Mike Smiths together. Mike Schmidt, you know, goes over and he does his uh, mall job. Then beats someone up, gets fired. What does he do? Go to a career counselor. Perfect. And then William Afton finds out who he is, puts him in the Freddy's because there's no one working there anymore because they died from the fast track. And then boom, we got we got that reason. You know, we got all that done. And then we come to find out. I'm thinking they should start. They started with the dream theory, which is perfect, but they. He should have explained why he was doing it. Because I feel like they just jumped into it. Which was a little interesting, but I feel like they could have just explained immediately, like, hey, my brother was kidnapped, so I'm trying to find him. Which may sound crazy, but I mean, you're watching a Five Nights at Freddy's movie, I, I don't know what you're looking for. So, you know, he does this, he goes to the pizzeria on the first night I mean we could still have the vandals don't get me wrong because I know what you're thinking there okay viewer oh but what about the vandals you, the Aunt Jane plot it had the vandals in it and we can't have kill we need to have kills but we can still have the vandals it just won't be for like you know oh because Aunt Jane said so it'd be more like you know they're vandals and they see this giant pizzeria that's been old school that's in like the old school and they want to go steal like fast coins because maybe that's worth a lot of money it's like when the Chuck E. Cheese tokens were you know discontinued and then they started on eBay at over like a thousand bucks we, they could have done that and that, that would have been a good reason we've had all the animatronics kill them and then Vanessa will, will, it'll play out the same way now I know what would be a little weird would be the end. Well, actually no, well, because the house name with Golden Freddy was weird enough, and I guess we just won't have another kill from Aunt Jane. So maybe that was the only loss. But I feel like in my head, I just think that we could have just had the Afton plot and the Mike and the brother plot together equally, and we didn't need to have this random lawsuit plot. But don't get me wrong, Doug was the best character in the movie. I mean, come on, come on, play that game. And, but yeah, that's my thoughts on the movie. Alright, so here's the conclusion of the movie. Er, sorry. Conclusion of the review. Five Nights at Freddy's. It gets a 10 out of 10 in my book. Great gateway horror movie. Definitely recommend for you guys. And, yeah. You have, oh, just... I don't know if I said this earlier, but this is my opinion. Probably should have said that first. That probably would be better. But that's fine. I would like to let let me know your opinions down below in the comments. And next week we'll be talking about Blink twice. But if you want me to review any other movies, so let me know in the comments. I do have a list. I'll put it up here, and then that'll be where we're going for it. This will be every Friday, or at least hope I'm gonna try and make it every Friday. If not, it'll be once per week with my other videos. But don't worry, I'm just doing this as like a little, a little like thing. Because I watch movies a lot, so might as well just review them. And I ain't no critic, I'm just here to entertain. So, I hope you all enjoy the show. Please subscribe and like to my channel. We're almost at 500 subscribers. Let's just make that milestone happen. Or if we could get, and let's get to the thousand as well. We'll start getting there too. And y'all enjoy the your rest of your day. Click here for my um, for one of my videos. We'll hear that intro actually or outro. So I'm gonna go, and you have a great rest of your day. Bye bye guys. Uh -huh.